Good morning and welcome everybody and thank you for coming to the a new ding on, on Remo today. Really appreciative of you all coming to join and, and use this opportunity just to find out a bit more about both digital solutions, the University Centre of Shrewsbury uh, and opportunities to network with each other and some of the other programmes of support for businesses across the Shropshire region. So I'm really grateful you're all here. Um, we are going to have an interesting day today. We've got a, a talk from my colleagues from the University Centre of Shrewsbury, uh, particularly focusing around you know, how the university can em employ and engage uh, with um, students, businesses, um, and, and the curricula. And I've got some, we've got some examples from that. So I'm appreciative of our talk, our speakers who will come on stage in a second. Before we go into the main um, stage around that, there is some basic housekeeping um, that I'll just remind people who may be using Remo for the first time. Uh, and also I just introduced myself. So my name is Joe McArdle. I'm Director of Health and Medical Innovation at the University of Chester. And I'm the uh, lead um, project director for the Digital Solutions Programme at University Centre Shrewsbury, working along with the West Mercia uh, Rural 5G Programme, uh, as well as uh, the Academic Health Science Network and the programmes about looking at how do we start to develop the economic environments around health, social care and digital programmes where we know this is an area that is government priorities and really important for the rural communities we've got um, around that. And recognize is a skill set, it's a really important uh, transsectorial skills. And so we'll be having some chats from some of our teams about how we can support some of the skills development. So that's who I am. Briefly, as you come into, we're in the main auditorium, you've been automatically put in here. When we finish uh, the spotlight talk from my colleagues, um, we will look, you can see on the right hand side, there's some general chats. If you've got some questions and answers, if you click on that, we can ask questions of the audience for individuals. Um, they're going to do their talk. You'll see, I'll have to say shortly. Um, then we'll actually have what we call opportunities for shout outs, some small businesses um, and other programs of support, which will just shout out and they'll tell you who they are. When we finish that, We'll all go back to the main conference suite and you will see in your little tables, uh, you can choose your own seats and you can sit by the people that you want to catch up on. So to find out who they are, when you move your mouse, you'll be able to hover over the letters and it'll tell you a little bit about the individuals, etc. cetera. Um, you can also um, um, move, unclick and click onto another table. There are some tables which are bigger tables, but also if you want to have that, you know, more detailed conversation, you'll notice some side tables of two people where you could just have a one-to-one -one conversation with some if you arrange that as well. Um, when people are, are, when we invite the people onto the stage, so just remind those people who come onto the stage, you know, if you can remember to switch your, you'll be ultimately have your camera off, so you can switch your camera on and your mic on and that'll help bring you onto the stage, uh, etc. And they will appear on the stage. When I ask you to leave the stage, all you need to do is switch your camera and mic off and it'll take you automatically off the stage. Um, and apart from that, I shall now invite, and we can just check all this works, I'm gonna invite my colleagues, Ross Frisbee, Adam Crane, um, and also one of the business we work with, Vince Dovery, to come and uh, join me on the stage. And I'll let them come and introduce themselves. Welcome Vince, welcome Ross. So you can see it automatically adjusts themselves. I'm going to take myself off stage for a second and I'm going to let Adam just introduce himself and, uh, and, and end the programme of work. Thank you very much, colleagues. Good morning, everyone. My name's Adam Crane uh, and I'm from the University of Chester from the Employer Engagement Team based within Careers and Employability. So I'm based on the Exton Park campus in Chester, uh, but I work with all of, our, all, all of our sites across the university portfolio. Um, so that's who I am, but I'll go into a little bit more detail and, and exactly what I can do for you because I exist to support employers and businesses. So uh, so please do use me in that sense. Ross, do you want to say hello? hello? Yeah, morning everyone. So my name's Ross Brisbane. I'm the academic lead for business courses, events courses and sport courses, specifically at University Centre Shrewsbury. Um, we run a suite of undergraduate degrees and some postgraduate uh, courses as well. I'll hand over to Vince. Hi, morning everybody. 
Um, apologies for being in a car, can't be helped. Um, I uh, run a couple of local businesses in Shrewsbury um, and I've been lucky enough over the last two years to have uh, had support from uh, Shrewsbury campus at University of Chester, but also to, I hope, be able to give support to some students in terms of work experience um, and a tailored work experience rather than a generic make me a cup of tea do some filing so that's that's why i'm up here that's great thanks very much fence appreciate it um so i'm going to share a, a, a brief presentation we're just going to work through um some of the ways in which we work with employers and businesses and put some things into context um uh, for you and then hopefully hopefully that will initiate some further discussion after the event uh and we can um and we can build some build some great relationships so uh bear with me while i try and share what I have, uh, Ross. Can you give me a yay if you can see my see the screen? Um, it's small. Just hang on. I'm going to close the chat. How does that look now? Yeah, if I click on the enlarge button, it, it's great. It fills my screen now. Great. Okay, so um, I'm going to start. So um, engage, recruit, and connect. These, these three themes are, um, are what, we, what we build everything that we do with regards to employer engagement into. So we help businesses and employers engage with students, we help you recruit, um, and we help you connect with other parts of the university. Because I'll make no bones about it, and I'm sure my colleagues completely agree, universities can be quite complex places to navigate for staff and students at the, at the best of times, never mind for businesses. So, so it is also a big part of our job to help you access other other university services as well. Okay. So we've done a quick introduction um, anyway, um, but I'm also the faculty business partner for science and engineering, social science and medicine, dentistry and life sciences, as well as the medical school as well. And we've heard, heard from Ross. So um, I work closely with Ross on the building skills and growth capacity uh, project um, on, on helping get some student placements up and running as well. So I just want to talk about a little bit of wider context, just so we can understand the University of Chester and where it sits um, alongside everything else. Engage, recruit and connect, what those exactly mean for you as a business. I'm going to touch on workplace experiences more because these are one of our primary primary engagement methods and a great way for you to start um, building links with students and conference. And the next steps for if you want to uh, take anything further, take any discussions further or get involved in any of the opportunities uh, that we have. So the employer engagement team is made, of, made up of around 10 colleagues. Um, we're based in Chester, but we work across all of our sites. We have seven learning sites um, across the university. Um, and we have five major programmes and projects within the employee engagement team. So the, the, the great thing about our team is that we work centrally. So we have great visibility of the whole university and all of the university centres, of which there's a growing number. So we have the University Centre Shrewsbury, Warrington, Birkenhead and Reese Heath. Um, so we work out of all of those, which gives us a really good sort of broad view of what's going on around the university and what students are getting up to. Um, we have that culture of, of engage, recruit and connect and the student's experience is at the heart of everything we do, particularly with a new citizen student strategy which the university is, is rolling out at the moment. Um, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail because there will be um, some uh, sort of literature for businesses about that. But what I'll say is a major part of that strategy, which I think applies to employer engagement, is building social capital. So we have a huge emphasis on, on students and graduates and helping them build their social capital to enhance their employability and enhance their future prospects as well. So we have qualified project professionals in the team um, and we're highly connected around the university. But more importantly for you as a business, we are commercially responsive and experienced. We are not a nine to five, Monday to Friday team. If you need to have a discussion on a Saturday morning, because that's the only time you can do it, uh, or a Sunday evening, we, we can do that. We, we work out of hours. We speak to MDs and CEOs at seven, eight o'clock at night because they can't squeeze us in at any other point during the day. Um, so we are, we are aware that the world of business is not nine to five. So we don't operate on those hours. Um, we respond um, to 
your business needs and your business requirements. So when I talk about engage, we're talking about a couple of things here. We're talking about your employer brand awareness. Now, it may sound a little bit strange to be saying that, particularly um, if you're just at the start of your journey of recruiting students and graduates. But as we know, in a visual age where Instagram is king, we do have to be really aware with students about how they latch onto things, particularly if we're talking about careers. So we have to make sure that we are getting the business names up to students, the industries, the sectors, and really planting these seeds really early on using a variety of methods. So, you know, whether that be some visual case studies, whether that be a Q&A panel, whether it be um, short recorded videos. So we have to be constantly aware about how students consume information. So we work really closely with our graphics department to help create visual um, visual graphics for uh, our career hub system, which are which is our careers management uh, platform. Um, and a major part of that engagement as well is is sharing your insight and expertise. We have a series of employer Q and A panels. Now there are two two sort of parts to this. Yes, it's useful for you as a business. Um, to come along and maybe advertise some opportunities you have, but also as well, I think it's really valuable for the students and the graduate to hear from you, the employer of the business, what you're looking for in the students. Because, you know, particularly when they get to level six, quite frankly, they're sick and tired of hearing it from us, the same faces they've been looking at for three years. Um, and we're not the experts, you know, it, it's, I work in a university, I don't work in a life science business. Um, so, you know, businesses are evolving at rapid rates now. So it's really important that as an employer in a business that you can share your insights and your expertise to those students so that when they are making those crucial decisions, they're making them in an informed manner. When it comes to recruitment, we have a, we have a dedicated team based, based in the employer engagement team. So we have a vacancy team that helps you push vacancies out to, um, out to our students and graduates. It's a free of charge um, platform uh, to advertise your vacancies. Um, it's important we note that because there's a growing trend in universities charging for advertising vacancies now, which to me is a crazy concept, but hey ho. Um, our vacancy team uh, will also do targeted emails as well. So we do targeted emails and targeted notifications through students' mobile app. So if you have an opportunity that may be quite quite sort of niche and specific for a group of students or graduates, we can target those as well. If, you, if you're also working on a very specific equality, diversity and inclusion um, campaign in your business, so if you're maybe targeting BAME graduates, we can do specific targeting uh, to those students from those demographics as well. And hosting a workplace experience is, is critical, not going to go into, this, into too much detail right this minute, um, but what I will say is those who do host a workplace experience, we've got a very high percentage rate of onward further employment. So it shows that the program works and it builds great relationships as well. And when we talk about Connect, we have a variety of business growth programs. Um, I'm not gonna go into those in a great amount of detail because you guys are already linked with uh, the various growth programs around the university. Uh, but I would also bring in, um, bring into this research as well. So please do use the employer engagement team if you do have any research ideas, no, no matter how small you think they are, if it's something you think will add value to your business, please do speak to us and we can connect you to the right colleagues in the research and innovation office or academics around the university to help explore that or even use, or even use students and graduates to start building feasibility studies and plans into maybe, into maybe some areas of research. Those feasibility and blue sky thinking plans make great workplace experiences. And a lot of our employers use students and graduates to do that. So um, that's a great opportunity. I'm just gonna to touch upon workplace experiences a little bit more now um, because it's a major part of what we do. Um, so we fund um, approximately about 120,000 pounds worth annually of workplace experiences. These take place in sort of three themes, internships, placements, and projects. What we mean by projects, now this is quite new, uh, a lot of universities are doing this, and it, it, it is tipped to be the new model for workplace experience. They're called project scholarships. So, uh, and it's to make them as easy to access as possible. One of the major barriers we have 
with workplace experiences was the way universities typically run these is that we fund you the business to then pay the students or graduates or it's done on like a match funded basis but not so much anymore now one of the issues with that is if you're a startup you may not have a payroll system you may not be you, you may not have had the experience of recruiting somebody and all the associated employment legislation and, and requirements that you have to do as an employer uh, to go alongside that so project scholarships are a very easy way um, we actually pay the student direct from the university on a bursary um, on a bursary scholarship uh, payment method so they get that paid at the start and then midway through um, but it means that you don't have to go through the administrative burden um, and all, all, all of the employer related stuff so it's very very quick to get started uh, students can work for about four to five weeks and there's a variety of programs under that as well. We do graduate internships, they're actually running at the moment. They're very, very specifically timed throughout the year. Um, but we can talk to you about if you want to engage in the next round of graduate internships. Certainly with the project scholarships and, and the placement scholarships, um, anything project related we find is really, really useful uh, for, for a student um, or a graduate to undertake. Um, and what we'll say is we have we have a really um, strong commitment to equality and diversity at the University of Chester. So actually, um, this will contribute to your own CSR work that you may be doing as a business in that all applications to these from students um, are blind. Um, so you as an employer will receive a list of applications and you'll have no idea about their demographics, whether they're male, female, disabled, not disabled. Um, all of those protected characteristic demographics um, are not identifiable through the application process. You will only find that out at interview and final interview stage. Um, so it's a great driver and it's actually driven our widening participation engagement. So um, those students from low socioeconomic backgrounds, uh, those with disabilities, those from the BAME community, they made up two academic years ago, they made up about 20% of participants and actually only 18% were successful in, in, in gaining the workplace experience. Now that's at 55 and 58% respectively. Um, so we're now at over half of engagement is from our WP students, which is, which is fantastic. But please do talk to me about these. At the moment, they're fully funded. So it costs you, you as a business nothing, with the exception of the graduate ones. But we can have a conversation about that. Um, you just have to cover some of the small on costs as an employer. So, so there's a small NI contribution for the graduate internship ones. But for the placements and the project scholarships, they, they are fully funded. Um, everything we do is paid. We don't advertise or, or encourage or advocate unpaid internships at the university as they severely hinder social mobility. Um, so everything that a student does is paid at the, at, at the living wage or above. So next steps, um, if you want to talk to me about any of this, um, if you want to take any conversations further, please do get in touch. As I say, we're really, really flexible. We understand um, that you guys' businesses are very busy. Um, please don't have any hesitations in saying, can we have a conversation at seven at night or at you know, sort of half seven, eight in the morning? It's, it is not an issue at all. Um, you can get through to the team on employers at chester.ac.uk. That comes straight through to the team. So if, I, if I'm not there, someone else can pick it up um, and someone will always respond to you and arrange a, arrange a meeting to, to discuss anything further. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Ross, who is going to give a little bit more of a UCS context. I've given the wider university context. So I'm going to hand over to Ross to talk about what they do at UCS. Ross, would you like me to leave these on screen and we can do a bit of a Chris Pitty routine. You can tell me next slide. And I'll move it across. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, okay so thanks, Adam. Yeah, so that gives a, a good overview of the wider university offer and the, the benefits of, of setting up maybe something like Career Hub that Adam manages there. Specifically at um, Shrewsbury, we, we offer a, a range of, sort of work experience opportunities that's built into the students' curriculum. So um, in year one, the students do a, a one week placement, but it's, well, it's 36 hours. It can be done a morning a week. It can be done a day a week for five weeks. It could be 
uh, a block of a, of one week and basically it's just to try and engage students with local businesses and maybe to make a connection that both the business and the student can use you know throughout the, the course of their degree program so again these students are from business courses events or uh, sports programs and indeed Vince who's on the stage as well he might talk a little bit about how he took some of our sports students for this specific placement last year uh, and he was able to tailor the opportunity to to their interests as well okay next slide please adam so in year two this is for all students at university of chester so one of the few universities that do this for they have a, a block period of time five weeks where all students must go on placement so that's something obviously university center shrewsbury does roughly sort of mid april to mid may um and it's a five week block unpaid um but it might be a good opportunity maybe for a business to tackle a task that has been on the back burner for a little while or something you've not been able to get the chance to to get to for a while at the end of year two again all students have access to the opportunity to take a year out so like to a sandwich sort of placement and that's generally 12 months and it is a paid placement so you know in my ideal vision if, if a student had made um, a good impression over year one and year two with a company it might be that you know it might be in both of their interests the company and the student to maybe do a year's placement and uh, give each other the chance to really see how they work. But the, the thing about that one is it is a, generally a paid placement, that one. Okay, so then next slide, if that's okay. Just I just put a couple of other opportunities that um, again are part of the curriculum. So one of our uh, modules is specific, well, in fact, it runs from year one to year two and through year three students to develop their own sort of business ideas but as part of that it's great for them to hear about any real life business issues that are happening you know and to help for them to maybe help solve some problems that are that people are currently experiencing so if your organization you know if you think that might be useful to come and tell us your story that would be great and maybe if there is a issue or a, a problem to solve that might be something our students can perhaps uh, work on with you or be part of in some way that would be uh, great for the students and hopefully you would get something back from that as well okay adam what last one maybe uh one of the when we students on placement i would say about 80 percent of them are generally around marketing and one of the great things our students can do is like social media sort of work so when they do a marketing module in year two um one of their assessments is actually to run a four-week marketing campaign so if that's maybe something that you think oh, maybe it just gives you know it's a gives students the opportunity to maybe showcase themselves to you um and you can see whether that works out they'll run all the uh, analysis as to the success of the project and hopefully it, it adds some benefit to businesses that tends to run you know they tend to have that um assessment sort of between december to january or february time so that would be a good time for that to happen and last slide adam so any more Oh, you still there? I think that's everything. I'm from... mute. Yeah, so that's basically the, you know, some of the things that we, we offer as part of the program, but also some of the projects that are running at Shrewsbury as well, including building skills and growth capacity, you know we try and do you know support businesses with some of our courses as well some of them are very short and accessible maybe to 
to staff that are working full time. So we might be able to work a way of um, accessing some of the programmes that we have to offer. And that's something I'll happily discuss with you maybe at the end. Okay, that's, so. that's great. Thanks very much, Ross. So uh, just before I pass over to Vince for a few words, I'd just like to say, please do, as a business, please do make your, your university work for you. Um, so, you know, when it comes to research, we universities get measured about that against the research excellence framework. But also, and, and it isn't sort of widely known at the moment, but we, we have something called the knowledge exchange framework, of which business engagement and employer engagement forms a critical part. So actually, your local university almost has an obligation to help you as a business. So please do make your university work for you. Vince, can I just come on to you just to just to give give some words about your experiences about engaging with the university in the context that you have, please. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Well, I've, uh, listening to you, Adam and Ross, I've had sort of two experiences. Pre-lockdown, um, I was uh, asked by uh, a lady called Trina, who was running the business, a business course, to come in and speak to, <clears throat> excuse me, some first and second year students about um, real life projects that they have bubbling away in their heads, how you can draw that real life project out uh, from head to paper, and then to sort of framework it with them. And over the course of, I don't know, six or seven weeks, it was abundantly clear that some of these students have fantastic ideas for businesses that they want to set up in a year, two year, three year, four years time. But the academic side they were learning, but it's the real life side that perhaps they 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 were unaware of. Um, and so working with Trina and working with the students, we, we took some fairly rough and ready ideas uh was i think the phrase was a critical friend uh and sat there and explained to the students exactly what we were able to uh, admitted the frankly litany of mistakes that i've made in my life in business to try and encourage them and explain that you know there are going to be humps and hurdles on the way but if you've got a good idea and you and you're resilient and you've got the support then you know go for it so that was my first experience my second experience was much more about the workplace well pandemic style workplace uh engagement with students um and last year i was uh, approached uh and i took on two students remotely 36 hours each but rather than in the past, I've taken on work experience people and it's uh, someone sort of wide eyed has turned up at your doorstep at nine o'clock on a Monday morning. Not entirely sure what you do, what they're meant to do or how you evaluate what they've done. <clears throat> Excuse me. That wasn't the case this time. Uh, there were lots of discussions beforehand about what I expected from the students, but equally what the students and the university expected from me it's a two-way street though it's not about me getting free labor in to do the jobs that no one else wants to do it's got to be uh, a challenge for the students it's got to be targeted for the students but equally i've got to get something out of it and there was that there was that recognition from both parties that it was you know th these conversations were had so when i had the two students turn up we set them some projects some remote projects um we agreed with the students a timetable for delivery what we expected for delivery uh but also i think like adam was saying you know if you want to speak to me at seven at night or six in the morning or on a sunday fine i'm available but rather than just being left to get on with things the university every week were in contact with me I want updates. How's it going? How's not just academically, how's it going? Not just project wise, how's it going? How are they settling in? What kind of feedback? What are your thoughts on the person? Um, and o over the course of, I think it was, yeah, it was 36, well, 36 plus a few hours. 
not only do I think that the students gained a certain amount, very much uh, they gained an experience and confidence in having their ideas, but I gained a lot. I gained a lot in terms of I got two fresh pairs of eyes looking at projects. They came up with ideas I hadn't thought of. They questioned me, which I liked. Um, and then at the end of it, they were, gave a report and they gave a report back on me. And to be fair, it was fair. It was accurate. It, it challenged me. Um, but it was exactly, I could write down exactly what I wanted from a work experience placement. It would be that. So I, I'm touching base with, uh, now we're opening up again. I'm touching base and the plan is next year to either have those two students back if they can or to look at some year two students and, and take them on. So rather than waffle on for hours and hours and hours, my experience was overwhelmingly positive. It did require some input from me, but it meant that what I got out of it was massively enhanced. So I don't know if that if that answers what you wanted, Adam and Ross, but that's that's my um, my experience. That's absolutely perfect, Vince. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time on that. No problem, and, um, and you know, it's really pleasing to see positive impact. You know, that's 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 the uh, the sort of nature of what we do. So that's brilliant. So Joe, I think we are. 29 out of 30 minutes, which is cracking organisation, Ross Vince. Thank you very much. Um, so I will hand back over to Joe and we will we will quietly leave the stage, but um, everyone does have our details. Please do check your chat box. Um, my LinkedIn profile is in there and also there's a link to the uh, presentation that you can view online as well. So Joe, back to you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Ross and Vince. Thank you for your kind words about your relationship. I said 